Punisher issue number one, written by David Pepos. Is it Pepos or David Poposi? 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 Surprisingly, I don't actually blame David. I blame editorial and I blame Marvel because what they're trying to do is solve a problem that was never even there in the first place. And I know that that was kind of uh, uh, what Richard Meyer had to say about this book, but it truly is one of the most baffling things that they have villainized the Punisher and the Punisher logo because of just some idiots wearing it out on the streets. And so they're going to completely get rid of the character, but they also want to bring him back. So it's the, the, the industry doesn't really know what it wants to do with Punisher. Marvel sure as hell doesn't know what they want to do with Punisher, but they're so timid and they're so afraid that they can't actually have any type of balls to write anything with actual substance or hard hitting like impactful meaningful story so um yeah what'd you guys think about punisher issue number one i know we kind of saw this a little bit last week but yeah we gotta read ahead we gotta read that read ahead of time yeah it's awesome oh boy uh, did we yeah yeah it just it just boring and bland i mean there's nothing yeah. there's nothing cool about the character himself no. uh just just a dipshit and uh doesn't didn't doesn't want to be the Punisher, and he's got a stunning and brave weapons person <laughs> who uh, is supplying all those weapons. And you got dipshit cops talking about coffee and who wants to run the crime scene. And you have twenty thousand people around the crime scene at this farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, and yeah. fighting lame villains. There's no there's no blood in this comic. Um, how this guy treats like how this this Punisher, this Boomhauer Punisher approaches like attacking villains it's not how i would see the punisher approaching it it's pretty fucking lame um it just that's what this comic book is it's lame and i yeah. cannot recommend this to anyone unless people just love lame comic books um i i think this is um a way of marvel trolling everybody that was a fan of the punisher it's like Ooh. oh you want the punisher okay we'll make him insufferable a moron somebody who doesn't want to be punisher Mm -hmm. with a black lesbian more than likely <laughs> like every trope that you guys hate we're going to put in here to the punisher to the point where you just hate him and it's like haha we're all gonna laugh in the office and be like do you see what these guys are saying oh uh, we got we oh we got them it's like interesting yeah, but the book's not selling you guys are fucking morons you realize that right it's like I was going to say, yeah, so you almost think that they're trying to take like a meta approach that they're like, oh, we'll we'll dunk on the chuds with this one. But by dunking yeah. on the chuds, they don't realize that their sales are going to go down. Right. That's the only mm. explanation for this, because this character is nothing. He's not. He's mm. absolutely nothing. It's just a bland white guy. Yeah. Doing stuff and media <laughs> and mediocrity. If you read The Punisher in the past, a lot of the creators, namely like Garth Ennis, Chuck Dixon, uh, Mike Barron, uh, I think Alan, Steve, Stephen Grant, a lot of these guys had experience with firearms, police, law enforcement, military. They had some type of knowledge about it. Reading David Poposi, I don't see any of that. I see it all as a, as a practical joke. Yeah, th this has this book has like zero identity in itself, I'll be right back. zero confidence in itself. It doesn't know what it wants to be. It has no character. It has no gravitas. It has no bold and like powerful nature to it, uh, which all of those Punisher comics in the past had this type of gravitas, this type of heavy weight, you know, put on not only Frank, but in, in the book, it covered, you know, these these topics and these criminals that were like, really heavy heavy uh subject matter so i think you guys nailed it i mean you hit it on the, the you hit the nail on the head when when you said bland yeah. i felt absolutely nothing while reading this comic and then when i walked away from it i forgot that i'd read it two seconds afterwards yep um they got I nothing think right they couldn't get anything right he never says zero. anything badass he never no like, he doesn't yeah. no real call to action it wasn't even like even at the end where he's kind of like, yeah, I guess I'll be Punisher, I guess, I think. 
I don't know, black woman, tell me what I need to do. Do I need to be Punisher? Okay, cool, got it. Yeah. Um, what else do I need to do? It wasn't even that because they would be taking it as, you couldn't even say that this guy's picking up the mantle because he feels like there's injustices being done that need taken care of and I'm the only one that can do it. It's like, right. because that would then be seen as an incel taking over the role and being like, oh, we can't do that because that's inciting violence and that it's like that's, that's going too hard in the paint. So we can't do that. We can't deal with any subject matters like you were saying that are too real and serious right now yeah. so it's like let's just make it as stupid and bland as possible so that way it doesn't offend anybody other than people that are actually fans of punisher <laughs> and let's just let's just troll and make fun of them well that was the big thing too is like okay so marvel had an issue with uh protesters wearing and and you know police officers <laughs> wearing the Punisher skull. So initially you go, okay, maybe it's just the logo. So maybe they're just going to try and get rid of the logo. But no, then Marvel was like, no, we're getting rid of the man because the man is problematic. The logo is problematic and Frank Castle himself is problematic. So now we're going to get rid of both. So now they've done an inverted logo, you know, skull logo, and they've they've brought this new guy, Joe Garrison, which is like the most, once again, bland, <laughs> stale, nothing name ever. Um, and I, they, they've, I feel like they've just taken the balls off of any type of Punisher comic or Punisher fan because that's what they want to do. They want to sterilize Punisher fans. They want to sterilize the character. Basically, I had in my notes that they want... I, I don't even know if they want to replace Frank Castle or if they just want to destroy Frank Castle, but this book in particular is scared, weak, and timid because you can feel that David Popose or his editor or whoever was editing this Marvel or whatever were just walking on eggshells the entire time. It's so bland and it's so just sterilized. You can tell that um, you know when when you read the Punisher War Zone or Punisher War Journal or any one of the you know classic Punisher tales or you know Garth Ennis's stuff, Punisher Max. Those writers have to have balls. Those dudes have to go all out. They are bold as fuck. Like th some of the things that they talk about, some of the imagery that they're portraying, you have to be brash, bold, confident, fearless when you're writing a Punisher uh, book or when you're writing the character of Frank Castle. Uh, but everything about this book is bland and safe which makes it extremely formulaic uh and boring so yep. no, nothing nothing about this yeah. oh go sorry go, go ahead. ahead nope finish yeah last thing nothing about this garrison guy feels fearing dominant or powerful which are all things that i felt from frank castle um he you know there's a difference between frank who is like a calm cool collected and vengeful aggressive powerful man as opposed to this chuckle fuck who's just tired, boring, and monotone. And once again, very bland. So, sorry, go ahead, yeah. Kyle. No, I was going to say two things. So, one, it's like when you read Garth Ennis' stuff at Punisher Max or anything, I just picture he is a fucking great white shark. In yeah, Europe, yes. Basically. Yeah. That's a great, that's does, a really like, great I have, I don't care about anything. I'm going to go out. If anybody does anything wrong, I'm going to fucking kill you. And I'm going to do it in the worst way possible. And then move on to the next one. And then the next one, and the next one. That's all I'm going to do. Eat, breathe, sleep. I'm going to fucking kill this person. Yeah, that's yeah. Because that was what was great about the Garth Ennis run is that Garth Ennis did a great job of setting up those villains, making us the reader show just how much we want to hate these villains, how much we want to hate these characters, and we can't wait for Punisher to come in and just lay lay them lay, lay waste to them toward the yep. end. What would be a good Punisher run to pick up for someone who has read, who has never read Punisher asking for a friend? Uh, actually, you know, I was going to, I was going to start, but uh, Drew and Kyle, I'll let, I'll let you guys go first and then, and then I'll give my, my pick. Uh, so there's two, I will recommend both are by Garth Ennis for jumping on points. One is uh, Punisher. Welcome back, Frank. And the other is Punisher in the beginning, which is, uh, which is the, the max run after that. Uh, it's just one through six. You're, you get both versions of like a Frank Castle story. One is it's kind of more cartoonish and fun and crazy, where he's like, like uh, it's just like a, it's like a, a Looney Tunes cartoon, but with violently insane. Then the other one is just stark contrast, serious, insane. And you really see because 
um, Garth Dennis talks about how 9-11 was a big impact on him and how when 9-11 happened, that's when Punisher and everything, it took, it became serious after that. And you, you see that. Um, so I do recommend those two. Uh, Welcome back, Frank, and In the Beginning. Yeah, those are the two I recommend. That's what what I read. I started out with those two. And because uh, I never I, I never read a lot of Punisher and I just like the covers. But um, <laughs> Tim so those are the two I started out with. And then like I was I was hooked immediately. Then you can go back to the Punisher War Journal stuff and some of the Mike Barron stuff and go back and just kind of if you want to read more of that. But I would start with those because those are fucking action packed. Uh, so I am actually going to recommend, uh, so there, there are quite a few. You could either go with Punisher. It starts with Punisher issue number 64, which is written by Dan Abnett. And it's seven issues called Euro Hit. And that's the story that it collects. I think you can get it in a graphic novel, but it, the story is written by Dan Abnett. Um, and then uh, Doug Braithwaite is doing the art on that. Uh, the other one I would recommend, we all have... Chuck Dixon. Chuck Dixon is the absolute man when it comes to Punisher. And if you want to see some of JRJR's best work, I would highly encourage you guys to check out uh, Punisher War Zone, which has the classic like red cover and Punisher is sitting there with two Uzis and like you can see all the shells like flinging out of them. Like this uh, cover, it, it almost. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, almost. So close. They almost got it there. Uh, and finally, it was only two issues. But Punisher issue number 94 and Punisher issue number 95, both are written by Dan Abnett, but illustrated by Frank uh, Taran or Taran. Oh, but, yeah. We looked at those. Like, oh, those ones together. we looked at? Yes. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. If you guys want just the most gnarly, grizzled <laughs> depiction of Punisher, where he is like beaten and, and battered. He doesn't have any guns, so he's just using like baseball bats and brass knuckles and like you know constant wire from this jail and whatnot. If you guys want that shit, ninety four and ninety five Punisher issue number uh, ninety four and ninety five are excellent. And in the, the the very end of ninety five, uh, he kind of pulls a fast one on the guy that he worked with, and he uh, it just shows you how brutal Punisher is because. Even when you think that he's like, oh yeah, we're cool. If you're a villain, fuck no, you aren't. If you are un, like you said, Kyle, it's a perfect depiction of a of a great white shark. Uh, he will not stop until he is fully fed. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my three recommendations: Euro Hit, uh, Punisher ninety four and ninety five by Frank Turan, and then um, Punisher War Zone, Chuck Dixon, JRJR. So. So, uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this bland milk toast pile of garbage. Um, I can't, Fire and Ice is probably the worst book of the week, but this one is the most forgettable. This mm -hmm. means nothing. This has zero, I, I can't even give it my time or energy because it is that pathetic. Um, wow. what, any, any final thoughts before we move on? It's just, it was a, it's lame, boring. It is a Punisher with no balls. That's what this yes. was. And yeah, who, who care? Who, if it's not Frank Castle, who wants to read this? Like, who is this for? It's for nobody. It's for those who found Frank Castle offensive. Yeah, it's for all of them to just laugh in the office and say, ha, 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 look what we did. Where are we so funny? I guess so. Yeah, aren't they, aren't we dunking on the chuds, guys? Yeah. <laughs> I bet with six dollars with forty pages of just lame, bland nothingness. <laughs>